I don't understand glutton for punishment, maybe. What's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. It's a beautiful day. It's hot. Really hot. It was just in the 50s a few days ago, and today it's 90. Like, I think it's going to be 91. It's not necessarily the heat that's the problem, that I'm not used to it. And holy crap, it is searing. Threw a towel up here on top of the shade because it's just, it's like frying my skin. I have on sunscreen, but it's not gonna keep me from feeling like I'm cooking. What is the, what are, I don't, what's going on here? I'm waiting for some things to happen before I can get rolling on yard work. That's what I wanna do this week is yard work. <laughs> Maybe move some plants outside. I don't know. We'll talk about that. Need to keep watching the forecast. You can see, there's a lot of dead stuff to get cleaned up out here. You done? I think he's done. Had enough, apparently. Do have some new plants that we can have a look at. I feel like I cheated on y'all. I went to a couple of nurseries over the weekend. I didn't film any of it. It just didn't seem necessary. Past two vlogs or something like that. I don't know. There have been a few vlogs in the last month where I've been out doing the plant shopping and I just kind of wanted to go in and out, grab a few things, and we'll have a look at what's going on over there. There's some neat stuff. I really want to get done is cutting back these sable palms that are all browned up. The needle palms that are over there. I'm thinking I'm going to wait until the sun has moved off the patio though. This is just too much. Okay. Next day. Probably didn't even need to make that transition. Y'all don't know what's going on. It is very windy. It's cooled off some. Looks like I'm going to need to clean the pool. There's a lot of stuff in that filter. Those are supposed to be spraying out like another I'd say six feet from there. Water's looking pretty disgusting. Need to handle that, it's the breeze. It's kind of nice having the strong spring breeze because it just blows all the junk right out of the trees so it's not a prolonged several weeks of constantly cleaning things out. You have those nice strong gusts that just spend a few days cleaning all the gunk up that blows out of the tree. Right, before I get going on all the pruning and clean up and just, you know, putting things back together over here, I do have something exciting that showed up in the mail today. I got this last year, absolutely love it. It's easier to clean than the old one. Yeah, there's pollen and stuff on it. That's just the nature of things this time of year. You see it wipes right off. Previous one was canvas, pretty gross and gritty. Only thing I don't care for when it comes to Squider are these cushions that it came with. I have spent so much time trying to find new cushions for it. And I knew that that would probably be the case when I got this. I didn't really care. I figured, oh, well, just order different cushions for it. Go to Lowe's, Home Depot, somewhere else those cushions and buy some new ones. No big deal, right? Oh, wrong. Nothing's ever that simple. For starters, the dimensions on this were wonky. Because they're two square cushions, usually, apparently, I know this now from looking at cushions, if you want the ones that are sewn together, normally the back pad is a little bit shorter than the butt pad, the seat pad. And I also learned that outdoor cushions are insane insanely expensive. Holy crap. I didn't know. I had no idea. All the cushions I've ever had out here, to be honest, just like put it out there. My mother's always ordered them for me. Each time without me even asking for that to be done. It's just, hey, here's new cushions. Thought you would like these. It's great things that a mother can do. I had no idea. Never found any cushions that fit this exact dimension for this bench. As far as being able to have three, there are ones where you can get like bench cushions where it was just one big one. They're like four or five hundred dollars. Some of them were way more than that. Most of the cushions I was looking at last summer, I couldn't find the dimension that I needed, period. So each cushion needed to be 22 and a half to 23 and a half. I figured you, know, you could crimp them, squeeze them in if they're just a smidge too big. I wasn't really finding anything that worked at 23 and a half inches wide. But this year, you know, it's spring, more places are selling them. I got this middle of summer last year, so a lot of everything that would have worked was sold out. I found some cushions that work. And I assume after all that talking, you wanna see them? They're so much better. These, this is the original color, but these are the backs of the cushions. I have them flipped around so you can see the back of them. That's the color that I attempted to uh, spray dye them with that Rust-Oleum stuff, thought I'd see how that worked and uh, did not care for it. One, very hard to get it to go on evenly. Two, the texture is like crunchy. It just doesn't feel good on the skin. And it has an odor that took several months to go away. I think it's probably fine for an umbrella or something that's, you know, far away from your face and not touching your skin. But for the cushions, I personally wouldn't recommend it. Now I know. I figured this would be a great time to try something like that, right? Because I was planning on getting rid of these anyway. And now here we are. I can get rid of them. Do you want to see the new ones? Now, let's have a look at the new ones and then we can get to work in the garden and go ahead and get these things peeled off there. 
zero water repellentness. That's not how you say that. Water resistance. They soak up every drop of water. There are things you can put on these to make them more water resistant. I've also been told that that can wear down the life of the fabrics. I am going to keep these because I think Toby would enjoy having a super big, mega, fun, do not dog bed, but dog ish bed dog pad he can have a new dog pad look at that pattern isn't that beautiful don't these look nice and they're five inches thick these are really thick cushions there's the info tell caribbean's the color 23 and a half by 23 and a half five inches deep from mosaic company i ordered them off of wayfair just getting that out of the way so once i have these set down I'm not gonna be able to see those tags anymore and then i'd have to pull it up on my phone and i don't feel like doing all that all right ready to see it you want to know what it looks like it looks so good. Drastic change. Isn't that awesome? Huge improvement, right? They're so big and plush, pretty firm. They repel water wonderfully. Not that that's a huge concern of mine because, you know, there's a canopy on this thing. When it storms, you know, the water blows around. I love it. It's a pattern that I really like. That was one of my issues. It took me a long time to find a pattern that I like. I don't think they really need to be this thick. I don't think five inches was necessary. It was just the way it had to go though. These were the first cushions I found that had the dimensions that I wanted and a pattern that I also liked. It was you know, hard to find the combination of the two. Be like, oh, I like that pattern, but then didn't come in the dimensions that I needed. Or it was just a single cushion. They weren't cheap. I got them on sale, but even still, they weren't cheap. They were so much. I figured like I could pull this off for like 40, maybe $60 a cushion max i couldn't i tried i bought and returned many cushions that i thought would work you know from the big box stores turned out i just really had to be more precise with the measurements and figure it out only downside to these is the back is not the same as the bottom but that's okay unless you want to lay this down and use it as a bed that's the thing about this glider the reason i liked it was because the back of it folds down into a bed. So I learned that when it's folded down to a bed, it doesn't glide anymore. It's locked in place. That's not really a function that gets used basically ever. So I decided I don't care about all that and that this is the way it was going to have to work. I like to sit further back. So I just been pulling that back cushion off. This is, turns out not uncomfortable at all to sit on. It probably would be if I didn't have a shirt on, quite if I was fresh out of the pool. But there's a back cushion for that, if need be. So much more comfortable. I didn't even really realize that the other ones were uncomfortable until I sat on these and went, whoa. Wow, that's an improvement. Living the fancy life over here. Five inch cushions. What? Plush and firm. That didn't make any sense. Firm and stuffed well. Those other ones you could squeeze right through them. I like them a lot. I think they're great. Very comfy. That's a UPF blanket for the legs. You know, keep the sun off the legs when you're sitting here so you don't fry them. I'm trying to avoid the melanomas down there. That was fun, right? We like the cushions. I think they're beautiful. If these were shorts or swim trunks, I would wear them in a heartbeat. Okay, enough of that. Time to get to work. Got so many things to prune over here. It's really mostly just palms though, right? The needle palm, all the sables. There's two sable miners over there, four of them over there. They need to be cleaned up. And then I'm thinking maybe I need to start spreading the mulch around. Sorry, I'm trying to hold the camera still. Maybe I need to start moving that mulch around that's on top of the banana clumps over there. See if I can spread it out. The gorilla cart is occupied right now, so uh, I can't scoop and dump it. Usually I take the mulch from those mounds, load it into the gorilla cart, and then I pile it up in the back of that berm that's down over there. It's just a good spot to put it. I didn't use as much mulch this past winter as I usually do though, because it had been a very mild winter. So I just didn't think that I needed to. It turns out I probably should have used more because the bananas looks like they died almost all the way down to the ground. I don't, actually don't know if I care about they grow so quickly that if they die back to the ground once they're a big established clump it's really not that big of a deal they're going to be maybe a month behind what they would have been doing had I preserved a couple of feet of trunk yeah they're less likely to fruit but I don't care about that because when they fruit they die and then their growth habit gets wonky because the main trunk the main pseudostem that's in there that has died now it just has all of its pups you end up with a big hole with the ring of pups around it and it gets harder to mulch them which is what i have approached now that's where i am now because i've had them fruit over the years so there are rings of bananas instead of nice clumps that are easier to mulch does that make sense can't just put down a pile of mulch that has bananas in the middle because the bananas are all like this so it's a lot harder to mulch them properly without using just an unbelievable amount of mulch which i don't want to do it's just unnecessary it costs a lot of money takes a lot of time 
they die back to the ground, that's okay. But it is stupid to mulch them this heavily if they're gonna die back to the ground. If that was a lot of stream of consciousness, I'm so sorry. Get to that. Prune first. Actually, I should probably clean the pool first. So water's starting to splatter on the sides there. Okay, clean the pool first. Which, it's not really clean the pool. I'm gonna dump some stuff. It's gonna be really gunky. Do you wanna see it? It's pretty gross, but it's also satisfying. You don't like it, you don't have to watch it. You just move forward. Gosh, the wind. One advantage though, to all this wind, it just blew everything right into this corner. I'm gonna net that out. I think it'll be satisfying to watch. I'll bring y'all along with me. I was going to just clean the skimmers out and do the like bare minimum so I could get on with garden work, but I think this is an opportunity you probably need to seize. That was pretty gross. I only did that one area over there. The breeze shifted as I was doing and blew the other half of the stuff that the pole didn't reach back over here. That's okay. That's what the skimmers are for. Come over here, get this, turn off the vacuum, turn off the filter. Okay, you wanna see what's good inside these skimmers? It's gonna be gross. You ready for it? Probably gonna be spiders. Oh, that's not too bad. Oh, the quantity is pretty bad, but I opened this thing up yesterday and there are, I think, six giant spiders hanging out on the side. I don't mind the bugs, but that was a bit much. I'm kind of glad I filmed this. This might be the most full I've ever seen these things get before overnight. This is absolutely... What is that? Oh gosh, what is that? Oh. Sorry, right, it's just a dog toy. Look at that. Like I said, that might be the most I've ever pulled out of those from just going one night without dumping the skimmers. Okay, skimmers have been cleaned, filter basket's been cleaned, filter media's been cleaned. But flip this thing on and see if the pressure comes back. There we go. That's better. Okay, probably gonna have to dump that again in like, I don't know, probably an hour. Wouldn't surprise me. Maybe two. I don't know. Let's get to pruning. So much dead stuff to cut out of here. Okay, it's about to say where do I even start here, but I think it's pretty obvious. If it's brown, then just cut it out. Look how big the hibiscus looking beautiful today. Look at that. I'm so glad I got the orange hibiscus. It's partially my sunglasses. Isn't that beautiful? It looks so good. You don't need the shades. It doesn't really do it justice through the camera lens. Right, so that's enough of that. Got my UPF sleeves on. because, Like I said, the sun is searing out here today. I'm gonna have to hold y'all while I do this because the sun is actually so hot that my camera keeps overheating and it's too windy for me to use the shade on the camera on the tripod it's just blowing everything away really that big of a deal there's nothing all that crazy going on here's cutting out dead palm fronds from in here there's only a few of them on each plant where's the end of whatever I just cut where did that go I'm probably trying to cut them down closer in there but this will do that's good enough really took a beating this past winter but luckily they're growing pretty quickly for being sable miners oh, that already making me so happy just having that little bit of brown out of there what a huge difference not having to look in at all that dead foliage especially when everything else out here is starting to look so fresh and so green luckily they didn't die did the fungicide treatments like two of them and that seems to have done the trick. Now I need to, oh, this isn't great. Those aren't even supposed to be there. This one pole, the really long one, the cup were on it's jammed. I've sprayed it, tried channel locks. I can't get it to collapse back together. This, isn't that ugly? That looks so bad. It's a needle palm. And usually I just go in and prune out a few dead fronds every spring, but I don't know. I may just cut the entire thing back. Uh, this is gonna take a while. Come back and see what I decided to do with it. Yeah, that's an improvement. There's still some brown tippage and things in there. Like I was saying though, the sable miners are more just going off of that topic. Some of them grow like snails and some of them are, I don't wanna say fast growers, but grow faster than the ones that grow like snails. Needle palms, they are pretty slow growers. So I don't ever want to cut anything off of them that I don't absolutely have to. So if the majority of the frond was still green like this you know, it has a brown tip in it but the rest of it's green i just left it and with some of them i went through and i cut the brown stuff out of the frond and some of them i just left them it's like i may have missed a frond in here 
some, that's going to be one of those things where there was enough in there where I'm probably going to keep noticing spots that I missed, but this is better. Got it opened back up from down below, so it's going to have better air circulation, which will improve its winter survivability and make it easier to fertilize. Things been a pain to fertilize. It's had a lot of growth that's been coming over that slope right there. Something else I'm noticing that I should probably handle is this. Let's but no, no. Who are the, the, the Hepticodium. Temple of Bloom, Seven Suns Flower. Great plant, or Seven Suns, Seven Hand, whatever. It's a nice plant. I really enjoy it. They max out around 10 feet. It's not gonna grow much more than this vertically, maybe another three feet. I have been training this over the last couple of years to get a nice vase shape out of it. And you can see that there are some branches on here that, well, that's, that, that's not gonna work, right? That's not good can't have it growing right into the window like that. This is the main stem down here. So that's the lead and these are branching off of that. You can see there's a growth that comes up here. That's going to be the main growth. This right here, I think I should just take the whole thing off and really, I should probably come in here and clear all this stuff out from down below. It's gotten big enough now where I would like for there to be more of an open habit. So right around this line and down, I would like for those trunks to be open and to be able to see underneath her. That would also be beneficial to the sable miners. They could use more light. They can take some shade. They're swamp plants, but they will recover better from that winter damage if I come in and open things up so that air can flow around them and so that they can get more sunlight. Ooh, I like how that looks. Big improvement. See around on the inside, you can see the center of the sable, so the sable palms in there. That is way too much shade. They need more light if they're gonna push out new growth and get healthy again so they can go through another winter here. And I just overall think that that looks better limbed up down low and gonna keep training it so it gets that nice vase shape to it. Ended up pruning out more than I thought that I would. That, you know, sometimes that happens. Sometimes you get the clippers in your hand and things can get out of control. I think it was necessary though. Got it off the window, that entire branch that was going towards the window, I cut that all the way from the bottom. And it looks like the third trunk, because I wanted this to have the three main trunks make that nice vase shape. The third one that's in there, it looks like it died off last winter. So it's going to be a two trunker until it maybe splits up down low, or does something, puts up another one. I don't know. Maybe someday there'll be a third. I would prefer there be a third, but this is okay. I think it looks a lot better being open down below. And that makes things more open for putting in annuals and letting the perennials do their thing, right? And a train a tree to take on a specific shape. It's one of those things you have to stay on top of. And it's kind of fun too. The Temple of Bloom, these heptacodiums, they grow pretty quickly. At least this one has. Actually, I also have one in my front yard that has not grown as fast as this one has. But I can prune on them like two or three times a year, which is fun. I haven't done any top cuts yet. It's all just stuff to keep the inside open, pruning out old flower heads and see I missed a few. That's an old flower head from last late summer, fall. That's when they bloom. I think it looks more tidy that way. And this is finally starting to give me that crepe myrtle vibe that I wanted over here. You know, the crepe myrtles, even though I'm zone 7A now, it's just they don't do great in my backyard. They'll do well for a few years, and then we have a winter like this past winter would have killed any if I had them out here, where it will be, you know, in the 40s and 50s and beautiful, and then we'll have a week or two of being below zero. Fahrenheit and they don't like that. Crepe myrtles have soft wood so that freezing and thawing and freezing and thawing causes the wood to move and expand. So it's generally only if you can grow one out for if you get lucky and have like a five to ten year stretch and you can get them to being really big nice girthy plants where they will be more cold hardy and do well here and uh, that hasn't been the case over the last decade despite the last decade being what dictated the zones being <laughs> bumped up. Some crepe myrtles around here look great. I think it's just my yard. It's just the way the cold air moves around and flows. There are things you can do to protect them. I don't feel like doing it. This is a good dupe. I'm getting that nice vase shape. They have the long panicles of flowers later in the season. The crepe myrtle, not as colorful as a crepe myrtle, but they hold their foliage really like almost into winter time. We're actually into winter time. This didn't defoliate completely until January this past year. And they flush out before everything else too. So it's not an evergreen, but I'm getting like nine months of foliage out of it. And I'd say that's pretty good. I don't know why I even went into all that. There'll be a garden tour probably in a week or two. And I'll probably be recapping all that. And overall, it's just, it's nice to have updates with the plants. We haven't really spent much time walking around here just looking at things, but that's not what I should be doing right now. What I should do is clean all this up before the wind catches it. I don't want to mess with the irrigation and the bags of sand, all that stuff that's over here. I want to keep my projects together, if that makes sense. I don't want to mess with the irrigation until I have the new stuff to rip it out and put in the new stuff. The sand, I guess I could find a new spot for it. There's some things we have to talk about. 
the patio may end up being restained. It was just done, but the intensity is so much that there have been a few days where I've gone in the house after being out here with sunglasses on and had board vision and like spots, just seeing spots, not just for like five minutes, for the rest of the day. And that's dangerous. And they said it would darken up. It's darkened up a little bit, but it is, it's just a bit too much. The camera balances it out, so it's probably not going to come across as intense to everybody who's watching, you know, on your screen. But if you're out here without sunglasses and it's sunny out, it's painful, painfully bright. And that's just, it's not pleasant and also not safe. If I'm seeing spots for the rest of the day and my eyes actually hurt, that's bad. That's with sunglasses on. I don't want to limit myself to only being able to be out here when there's shade on the patio. That doesn't sound like any fun. Oh, whole point there was I haven't done a lot of putting back together from having the staining done because I'm going to give it another week or two and maybe have it done again. Just a couple shades darker. That, that's, that's all that was. Right, anyways, need to clean this up so that it doesn't blow away. And then I need to prune up these recurvifolia yuccas over there. Oh, these are the bags of sand. If you're wondering what I was talking about, how the front of this is messy, that's what I was talking about. <laughs> Same when you do those yuccas and, oh, that could have hurt. Forgot, still have all these over here that need to be cleaned up. So it can be tempting to cut off a frond like this. See how the majority of that's still green though? I don't think I want to because there's still chlorophyll in there and these are being pretty good about pushing out new growth considering how early in the year it is. So I think I'll probably just leave stuff like that. Maybe I'll come in and just, you know, clean it up. But you can see this area over here has gotten pretty messy. Those are all weeds. I had the barrel over here and there were a whole bunch of plants that were sitting here for the patio restaining. So I couldn't even see what was going on over there. And I just moved them before I picked the camera back up and saw all this. So that'll be fun too pull out of there. My main focus is getting these guys cleared out, but may as well handle the bulk of that while I'm over here, right? Better, right? I know, no transition. Just nice and green, still some brown stuff on there. That's just the way that's going to be. I was going to just show y'all that and move on, but I realized that this might be very satisfying and fun to watch, getting all this stuff pulled out of here. At least I usually enjoy watching these things, seeing lots of stuff get pulled up and out of the garden beds. <coughs> the pollen is horrible. I could barely breathe. Huh? Better? There's still some little stuff I'm gonna be spraying for all that. I unveiled some more fronds that need to be cut out. The bulk of that work's done. That's really what I wanted was most just to get them pulled up before they can start taking over. Oh, that looks so much better, even just through the window. I'm loving that. I had to run inside, grab my scissors. I'm going to need these to get these recurvifolias cleaned up. It's getting hard to water them because they have all this old stuff hanging over the edge there so the water's not getting down into them. I know this probably, you're not going to like this, but the scissors, I have found, they just work better than clippers. I like to get in, clean it up, I'll leave a few inches there, and then over the next several weeks as the plant starts to get hydrated and go into its active growth for the spring and summer season, that will swell and then these little leaf bases will pull off much more easily. If I were to try and pull them off now, then I feel like it's just a lot of extra stress on the plant that the plant really doesn't need. It would look better, sure, to get that all done all at the same time. I prefer to just be more gentle until they've put out their flush of spring growth because there's not a lot going on up here. And that means there can be a loose crown. And if this crown comes undone up here, if that central growth pulls off or I go too far and that becomes weak and it can pull off, then the uh, monopodial growth in the spot is done. Forever, that is the trunk height right there. Forever, it'll butt out with more from the side, like you see in a Dracaena. I would prefer for these to get taller before they start to do that. If they ever start to do that, I would prefer them to just have that nice straight up and down growth. I think that they look better that way. You can see in here, there's some older leaf bases in here from last year. Those will pull right out because they had already been cut at the tip. They'll peel out nice and easily when they're older, but these other ones, the <laughs> newer ones up top, they're really in there and I just don't want to tug and pull on them if I don't have to. I kind of like the little mane. Okay, too far. Back it up. I like the little mane that they get. Won't be for all that long anyways. Need to pick all that up before it blows away. This is so, I'm so happy with this. I know it seems like a very minute little thing. It's one of those things that's been on the back of my mind to get done for several months and just haven't gotten around to it. Partially because I don't like to do that type of prune on them during the winter time. All this dead stuff there provides some winter protection for the trunks. I keep these outside the majority of the winter. I only bring them in if it drops below about five degrees Fahrenheit. And on that note, I need to remember these need to go into much larger containers this year. I think they would appreciate it. You can see the roots on this one. 
Look at that. Isn't that cool? But also means it needs to go into a bigger pot. Yuccas are so forgiving, it's easy to let them sit in the same container with really old soil for years and years and years. But they'll look better. Just remember to, every few years, give them some fresh soil and maybe bumping up bump them but I don't know. it just depends on the type of yucca to the recurvifolias they don't get very big they don't even need to go into anything very large i think you could probably pop those into 15 gallon containers they'd be good in those for several years bulb update it's been a minute there's so many things happening with the bulbs and i keep thinking that i'm going to forget to show everybody what's going on out here while they're in their prime it's, it's so pretty but what just happened there my mouth fell apart look at this one it'd be better if it were standing up but it's not. It was a few days ago. Look at that. Isn't that a stunning tulip? And it's huge, too. Absolutely massive. This one opened up probably five days ago, and it's still looking okay, despite the fact that, that it's down there. This is happening because there's not enough sun. So when I ordered these tulips, I thought that I had ordered early season tulips, right? Tulips that will bloom well, earlier in the season, while there's still a good amount of sun on the berm before the maple tree flushed out. It, they didn't open up all that early. <laughs> I would say these are a pretty late tulip, actually. And that's why they're stretched and leaning. They have very heavy flowers on them, too, so it's probably a good one to plant deeper. I believe these are called the Morris Gudnov tulips. They're a blend from color blends of these beautiful... This one's aging out. But nice red, heavily petaled tulips, very large flowers, mixed in with these yellow and orange, kind of corally tulips. They're so pretty. I absolutely love them. It has looked very nice over the last few weeks watching all these open up. And you see, there are still some that haven't even popped open yet. You can see their heads over there. Look at that one. It's not, okay, it's not as good as the last one. Right in here, you can see that blend. I'm not always crazy about red tulips. I was hoping there'd be a whole lot more of this than of this, but it looks like that's not the case. Or maybe it is about even, but the red ones opened up long before the others so i don't i don't know if it's the best blend to have together so they're not blooming around at the same time it's okay they still look great absolutely beautiful i think they look so good down here <laughs> really okay i think i missed the peak because like a week ago it was stunning about four days ago they were stunning it's been in the 90s i think that's been a shock for them it's been very warm it's going to cool back down but you know too little too late the damage has already been done there with the ups and downs and whatnot. They still look pretty good considering. Get the picture though. There's a wonderful drift of color over here in the front. The other reason that they needed to be an early... I'm going to be talking about all this in the garden tour, so it doesn't matter. I just wanted to make sure I had a shot of them before they all wilt out because I think that the red ones are mostly probably going to be gone sometime in the next week or so. At least the flowers will be. I thought it would just be nice to have a hint of what that looks like over here. It'd look better if that pot wasn't there, but I don't want to move the pot back on the patio. As I mentioned, might be doing the staining again, so I'm just going to leave that there for now. Have I shown you all the daffodils? I don't know. The watch-up daffodils? I spread them all over the place. I like daffodils to have that more naturalized look. Flower on this one, this opened two weeks ago, and it's still looking pretty good. I'd say it's starting to die out. And this is its first year, so that flower should get even bigger on that one. See, I had some more of them over on the inside. And I had something over here, but I guess not. Apparently I didn't. Oh, yeah, this is a good one. Look at that. Come on now, isn't that just a stunning tulip? Giving me much more of a peony vibe than a tulip vibe. That's probably why I like it. They came up very patchy over here. This was supposed to be full of them. And, uh, well, if that didn't happen, you can see that. They're not all here. But what did come up looks pretty good. Okay, and what else? The, uh, I believe these are precocious daffodils. They looked a lot better before the pedicides, pedicides, the butterbirds, before those started opening up. That looked really cute there. The little swoop that I had of them going from right here and up and around. Then I have the watch-up tulips planted intermittently throughout this hill over here, but you can't really tell because, well, they took their sweet time coming up and now all you see are butterbirds. Timing was off with those. There are a lot of daffodils up here. They all opened up and are facing the neighbor's house. That's kind of rude. Now look at that. Look at that. What are you doing? I'm going to do all the work. Look over here. Look at me. Well, at least the neighbors are getting a nice view. It makes sense. It's the afternoon sun, so they're facing over there. Well, some of them are facing this direction, though. Like, see? This one right there? Well, maybe that one's just dumb. Potentially just not the smartest out of all the daffodils that got planted and it doesn't know that it's supposed to turn the other way. Okay, that was fun. There's the tulip update. They do, come on, they do look nice. Even though they're flopped over, they look absolutely beautiful. Just a few days ago, they looked much better when they were standing up. I'll try and plant them deeper next year. Maybe that'll make a difference. Except that it means it'll take them longer to do their thing and flush out 
and then that'll be even more of an issue with the I don't know. Just out of nowhere. Windy and rain, which is great. Need the rain. Patio's just got oh, look at that is that white? Come on. This is it's not gonna work. We could talk more about that another time, I suppose. So I need to give it time to darken up. I'm just gonna keep saying it. I have a feeling that maybe it's going to storm. So perhaps hold off until morning to talk about the new stuff. In the meantime, look at the gingers. That wasn't there this morning when I cut all this stuff out. I don't remember it being there. Maybe I just couldn't see it from all the other stuff that was around. I went through and pulled the mulch piles and spread them out. Not much going on with the bananas. I mean, they're growing, but this is, I don't know, 20% of what I would usually have from them when I overwinter them with the big mulch piles. We'll talk about it more in the garden tour. It's time to recap everything. I mean, look, this was a huge clump of bananas and it's just nothing. This was an old clump. It needed a refresher anyway, so I'm not really all torn up about that. But I really just wanted to show you what I was talking about, how I have a ring of bananas that has to be protected, but there really isn't much going on in the middle, which makes it difficult because you end up having to put up a giant mound that would go from like out here to all the way over there to protect this ring. Or you could like make a ring with a donut, but then you have a middle where everything could be too. Again, we don't know. I don't know why I'm talking about this. I need to go inside because it's thundering and lightning. I don't want the dog near the pool, so pick up in the morning, look at some new plants, and see what's going on over here. Much better. Blue skies. That's a lot easier to work with than constant thunder and rain and wind. There were five tornadoes in the area last night. It was a pretty intense storm. Rolled through very quickly, though. It was just a squall line. 45 minutes to an hour. Just about everything was outside of the area. Okay, the, the new plants. You're probably ready to see these, right? I've talked about at the beginning of the video, and I need to get my brain on straight. Head on straight. Can't even get that right. As far as remembering what is most recent and like what, what y'all haven't seen yet. I've had so many outings recently to stock up on the annuals and pick up plant orders that I'm just going, what do you guys know about? What have I shown you? What haven't I shown you? The weekend was a few days ago, so I've already forgotten a lot, but I believe the majority of what I got were some things that I had talked about wanting and that I hadn't been able to find all that recently. Nothing crazy exciting, probably to most of y'all, but some Snow Princess Lobularia Alyssum. I just couldn't find them last year. I don't know why everybody had the white knight and i prefer the snow princess over the white knight i just find that they have a tighter flowering habit they're not as loose and spread out so i grabbed five of those you could say really i grabbed three and then two of these which don't look like a snow princess to me do they look like a snow princess to you these two things are not the same. Proven Winners has several varieties of lobulary, so I assume it's just one of their other ones and it got mislabeled. I'm not gonna bother looking it up because I don't care that much. I just thought that they were pretty. I especially liked it because of this light lilac color that this has. You can see the flowers opening up on there, which is characteristic that lobulary has that I really had never noticed before. You see that? I should set it down, that's too wobbly. How the little tiny flowers are opening from the bottom and working their way to the top. That's just not something I'd ever noticed about them before. Their flowers are so dainty that it was one of those things where you just kind of see them as a group. I hadn't paid attention to that detail before. So I thought that was neat. That's why I got two of those just because I was like, just for jits and shigs, got two of them because I like the color. Three of the Snow Princess. Always like to have Lobulary out here. It's fragrant. The pollinators really enjoy it. The Snow Princess gets big, like these are huge as far as an alyssum goes. Put them in planters that were 30 inches tall before and then ended up having them come all the way down to the ground. The tag says 24 inches and really I think they probably push more like 30. But that was also a part sun to part shade spot so they were more stretched out. So maybe 24 inches if they're getting the proper light and they'll stay more bushy that way. Yeah, I don't know. I just like them. They smell nice. I also got a couple of Roeos. These are all from Greenscape Nurseries here in St. Louis, if you're wondering. That's where I got these from last year. I just love them. I had them planted up around some palm trees last year. They did really well, looked really good. I picked those up. That one got knocked over from the storms. Picked these two up a couple of weeks ago from Weethop Greenhouse and Nursery. They were only 10 bucks. These things are freaking huge. That was a great deal. 
but I really do, I think I like the variety that has this more of a green color better. I like them both, but these are my preference. So if I end up redoing those pots the same this year as I did last year, I have those. And if I don't end up doing them the same way, then it's fine because I like having them around. They're nice looking plants. Canary wing begonias. It's a chartreuse green dragon wing begonia. That's all it is. They're some of my favorites. I didn't plant any last year. I remember on multiple occasions during the summer being like, oh, I miss them. Where are my canary wings? I need my canary wings out here. I grabbed a couple of those. I was thinking in the Miami planters, let me stand up without moving the camera too much. I don't want to make anybody dizzy. These two planters over here that should end up with some adenidia palms in them this year, assuming the greenhouse was able to keep them alive, the place where it's for my palm trees. I was going to say that I think that that chartreuse green would look good in the center of those with those adenidia palms with the electric orange sun impatience in front of them. The idea anyways, who knows where they'll end up. I just like having them around. There's something about the red mixed in with the green. I don't do a lot of red out here, but I really like the way the red combines with the green on this one. Okay, the next plant is going to seem like a really dumb thing to be excited about, but I am so, so, so happy to have found some green creeping Jenny. This is something I have talked about for a few years now on the channel. The golden creeping Jenny has taken over the industry. Understandably, it's nice looking. It has that chartreuse green. For whatever reason, I don't like this green color, this limey, yellowy green on the Creeping Jenny. I like it on the big leaves of the begonia, but not on the Creeping Jenny. I don't know why. I'm just aware of my preferences here and not settling for something I don't like. They had just the classic, regular, unaltered green Creeping Jenny. I grabbed four of them. Don't they just, they were so pretty. It's just one of those plants where I really appreciate just the greenness of it. It goes with everything. It's just green. There's nothing special about it. I'm growing these more for their drapey habit and their hardiness. The gold ones, they are nice. The issue I have with them is that sometimes when it's really hot during the summer, they don't provide the essence of lushness and like moisture, a cooling effect. When you see them visually, when it's really hot, I just look at them and go, oh, there's a plant that's really sad and thirsty. That's just one of those things that as a gardener, we kind of have to get over because a lot of plants are yellow and look nice in the garden. I mean, this could say the same thing about these. And I will say the same thing about these. The electric orange sun patients. I have planted these with the tropical rose, which is this, but just has a pink flower. A few years ago, I planted a ton of them and I did not like it. It was just too much yellow. It felt very dry and arid to me. I feel like these are colors that need to be used <laughs> sparingly or else it just dries out the environment and makes things feel hotter. That's just me. Do you know what I mean? Hopefully that makes sense. Everbearing strawberry hanging over here on a broken shepherd's hook with a bird feeder that's stuck on there and I can't get it off. This isn't where it's going to stay. I just wanted to put it someplace where it had room to drape. Vigorous, healthy strawberry. Variety just said everbearing strawberry on it. I honestly got this one because I like the flowers on it. I thought it was a cute plant and I like having strawberries around. This one needs some TLC, but it's fresh from the nursery. So, you know, it had gone from its grower to the nursery and it's been on trucks and everything. I don't really expect a lot of really big fruit on it for a while. I like having strawberries around. They're fun to feed to. The iguana, the tortoise enjoys snacking on them. People enjoy, I mean, they're good. I like a strawberry. It's just fun having a plant around that you can pick the fruit off of every now and then. And I really like the ones with the double pink flowers on them. It's just, it's just cute. That's all it is. It's just a cute plant. Then have three of the cordelins over here. They're usually, you know, just spike plants. Their one fell over in there. They were a good size. Look how big those are. Pretty big, hefty, girthy looking <laughs> spike plants. Set it down so you can get a better view of it. Usually, traditionally, just thrown into the center of planters and arrangements with lots of annuals around them. I really like them for their hardiness. They're not hardy here in zone six, six zone seven A, but they will die down to the ground and come back every year and get about this big by the end of the year. So if that's the look you're into, then you have that option. I like them because they'll grow nice and big. You can put them into planters and treat them basically the same as I do like a windmill palm. I'll keep them outside until it's like 15 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit and then I move them in when it drops below that. So I only have to move them in for maybe two to three weeks, sometimes more than that. It just depends on the winter. They get a good size on them. It's similar to the recurvifolias in these yuccas. That didn't, it was a terrible zoom. That didn't work out. The yuccas that we pruned up earlier except they're going to get bigger. They grow much more quickly. I'm trying to get 
more things out here that I can have out for the bulk of the year. Also, the more exotic looking things I can't have out here all year. That's why I have, you know, things like ewes stuck into planters. But I have the Rostratas. They're the same thing. Below 10, I move them in. They're technically hardy here, but I always have issues with them rotting out in the ground. So that's why I just keep them in the containers. It's just not worth it to me to risk losing them during the winter time. Mule palm, same thing. Below 18, 15, those go inside. I think I mentioned these around five degrees, those come in. So that's going to be the same thing here with the Dracinas or Cordelins, Cordellini, Cordellini. I don't, don't care how you say it, the spike plants, that's what they're called. These guys, I'm sure you've seen them before. They were a great price for the size. I think I may end up planting all three of them together in one container, probably put them in like a 10, 15 gallon pot. And then that'll just be a nice, fun looking, more not exotic. A lot of people wouldn't consider that exotic, but during the winter time when everything else is dead, It'll be nice having those out here. It's just something that adds some green and lushness and shape. They have a good texture and form to them. These have such a nice texture and form to them, especially when you have the three of them planted together. I'll probably get them to about six feet in height before I have to cut them and then they'll start branching off. Maybe I'll let them go taller than that. That really just depends on what things are like in the future in the grow space and how big of a container they will need. These things will get absolutely massive if you allow them to. I could probably talk about that in a separate video. Maybe I'll talk about that some more about getting nice, girthy, thick, beautiful growth out of them when I pop them up. There are some things you can do to make some differences in how they look. Skinny plants versus nice, thick and plump, really good looking Dracaenas. Oh, and an Alocasia. Lutea. Haven't had one of these in a few years. Haven't seen them for sale in a few years. I used to plant them out here every single year and uh, that nursery just stopped carrying them. They started carrying other random alocasias as opposed to the Lutea, the newer like the, what is it, Dark Star and some of those other ones. I'm just really happy to have been able to find this. More pricey <laughs> than what I'm used to paying for an alocasia. That's why I only got the one. Usually I would get two because I like to have them like flanking a pathway or and matching containers but no this was like 50 bucks so just got the one it's a good size though for 50 dollars still a few years ago this would have been 30 but hey i'm just happy to have found it the lutea you see why it's called lutea gold right the gold veining that's in there just an absolutely beautiful alocasia they don't get huge like the borneo giants do but they will still usually for me in a container push about five to six feet by the end of the growing season. So fun to look at with those upright leaves with that bright yellow veining mixed in with the green and usually the stems color up a little bit, not a ton, but they will get a slight golden color to them on the inside as well. And they offshoot very freely. So this one down here already has two little babies on it, maybe a third getting ready to come up. I can't really tell from this angle. Is that part of a one off shoot not the best angle to be able to tell you that they're easy to divide up pretty easy to overwinter so this is going to be one that i will be trying to keep around for a long time because you know it's like a 50 dollar alocasia want to make sure that that one's not treated as an annual okay and the last plants you've seen in the video they've been in the vlog the whole time you see them look at these these look the freaking monster julietta landscape size bromeliads look at that compared to my leg thing's a beast and they were cheap too so naturally I got three of them. These are a landscape bromeliad, which is not something I see for sale up here ever. Never seen them for sale before. That's why I nabbed them up and grabbed three of them. Usually have to go way down into Florida to find these at a nursery for a reasonable price. Otherwise, these are like 90 to 150 bucks up here because they're sold as an ornamental house plant. And instead of being sold as just a bromeliad that is fine with being tossed out in the sun and you can put it in your landscape and just watch it grow, they're sold as houseplants. That's a huge markup when things get categorized as houseplants. The Julieta, you, well, you can see right here, has a fun color transition. You go from the greens to the red. The more white they get, the more red that they will have. It's a bromelia that does offset quickly, so there are lots of little pups down there in the pots on some of them. I don't plan on propagating with that, but I'm okay with it. I think that it's fun that there will be extras down there to maybe hold on to from the winter. Look at tur Turbo. Hey. Turbo, come, no, 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 good, 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 okay. Thought I could get him to sit next to Bromelia. Come here, baby, come in. Right here, right here, good boy. Good boy, now have a seat. Have a seat. Turbo, what are you doing? Sit down. Good boy, he's looking at me, he's like, why would I sit you and have a treat? Look how big that thing is. I don't know if it helps. Turbo's 110 pounds. He's a moose. That is a gigantic plant. 
Look at that. The thing's freaking huge. Good boy, Turbo. You're free. You're free. You don't have to do that any longer. Good boy. Such a good helper. Thank you, Turbo. Right, come on. Look at that. Those are freaking awesome. I'm mean, sorry I had to make y'all wait until the end of the video to talk about them, actually, because they're something I'm so excited about. Probably could have gone on about them longer, but it's okay. I'm going to be using them in the landscape. I will more than likely be keeping them together, probably putting them around a palm tree, either here or over there. Maybe keep one over here or something. I, who knows? I'll probably end up going back and getting more. It wouldn't surprise me. This looks so cool. They're freaking monsters. I'm so excited to get those plants and get everything else planted, too. I think made enough progress here in the garden bed that once this cold front passes, oh, it's cold, by the way. See the pants in the hoodie? It's gotten chilly out. Went from being miserably hot to like 45 degrees. We'll probably have another week of that. Then I'll start plopping annuals in the ground and get moving on landscaping. Yeah, the things are piling up. I'd like to get to work. It is nice having them all arranged over here. This step, it has made such a big difference out here. Doesn't it just look nice? I'm not gonna say that I hate having plants arranged around these steps but I feel like there could be some more organization in that chaos and that'll probably have to wait until the big palm trees get delivered anyways this has been enough probably a long enough video there will be more plants next weekend here's a quick look at what happened yesterday at Home Depot uh-huh yeah don't mind if I do <laughs> thank you Home Depot yeah see it fit barely yeah, exciting stuff. You'll get to see that next weekend. I hope everybody's doing well. Comment down below. What's going on in your gardens? How's your cleanup going? Do you like the cushions? I think they're great. Had no idea five inches could be so satisfying. Thanks for hanging out. Just say hello. I love talking to everybody. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye. Bye.